Guys, thank you for checking out this episode. We'd love your support. Hey guys, thank you for checking out this episode. We'd love your support by heading to patreon.com forward slash freshly grounded. It really does make a difference in helping us continue making this content. And if not, no stress. Enjoy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Freshly Grounded. Another episode, I don't know what episode we're on, really and truly, brothers and sisters now. Um, but welcome, we are live on this one. So we're doing an actual live stream uh, right now. And I think it was unexpected by everybody. So that's always positive. Let me just, I will, whenever we do live streams, I always just feel like I want to just check. I'm, I'm going to share it as well. There oh, we sorry. go. That's all right. We got, now you guys have heard the guest. Uh, all right. Oh, I, I didn't title it, so it's just called live stream. Well, I should change that title to like a live stream. Um, all right, cool, we're on. Guys, we all know the situation. Before we get into the episode um, in Yemen, and as we mentioned um, be- before, we uh, are helping to raise money. Uh, we want to raise 100 emergency packs, which are £100 each, uh, for the brothers and sisters, the families in Yemen. Um, you can see it via the link in our bio. Now, you might not see the link in our bio if you're watching this live because we have to kind of add all the bio links and stuff just after um but um what i'll do is i'll try and like post it up and pin it or or something or put it in the comments but um if you're not watching this live then you should see it in the bio um so please go ahead and support that also uh, if you're a fan of podcasts you're probably a fan of audiobooks and the audiobook that i'm currently listening to is um how to stop worrying and start living by dale carnegie it was written in, in i think 1942 and i just finished the night um i just finished how to win friends and influence people which i've been telling you guys about for a long time so that's finished now alhamdulillah but if you want to start listening to audiobooks you can get a free audiobook uh by going to the link again in our bio which will be there straight after this live stream um you can get a free audiobook or you can get like one month free or something and what happens is audible give freshly grounded a little kickback so we'd really appreciate if you use that link cool without any further ado guys this episode is going to be with our brother john fontaine john i don't think has ever been on freshly grounded uh, although he kind of has he's kind of been on our most popular episode ever of freshly grounded <laughs> um so without yeah any further just, ado, just 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> without any further ado uh, guys the episode because this is a live stream obviously uh, the episode hasn't actually happened yet um so i'm gonna hit the intro and we're gonna go with john also because it's live feel free to um comment in the comment section and ask some questions and and if it's kind of appropriate, if the time's right, we'll uh, bring them in, inshallah. And so without any further ado, let's get into it. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. The, no, after that bit. The brand new podcast. And after that bit? By best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? Okay, and we are in John Fontaine. Assalamu alaikum. How are we doing? Assalamu alaikum, bro. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm very well, bro. I just mentioned kind of just in the uh, beginning um, that we kind of haven't had you on a podcast before, mm. but kind of you've actually had been <laughs> had our biggest podcast. So um, let me tell the story about this. Let me tell okay, the story okay. about this. Um, so what happened? I can't is, believe you forgot me though. You're like, what would you mean? You just forgot that whole. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you're the one who like made us like become successful um <laughs> guys what basically happened is um so around the time that the new zealand attacks happened john went over to new zealand um and he went to the actual mosque which i believe is called masjid al-nur, masjid al-nur, yeah. masjid al-nur and um he uh went to um give da'wah to the community to help and support basically wherever and whenever he can and one of the biggest stars to come out of New Zealand is New Zealand rugby player Sonny Bill Williams. And we've wanted Sonny Bill on the podcast for a very, very long time. And John, while he was out there, managed to get an episode with Sonny. I heard about this and I was like, John, let's make something happen here. And Allah with his generosity and just um, 
uh, it wanted to spread the dawa and sincerely wanted to spread the dawa. Uh, I asked John if he could license us that episode, and he did. And I'm ever so grateful because that episode has mm. got like a quarter of a million views. And I pray that Allah uh, rewards you for any Amen. benefit that it has given to people. So Amen. I thank you for that, man. And, and thank you for being the. I've done. Mm. So so we'll, we'll say that. We've, let's say on average, there's been about 184 episodes of Freshly Grounded. I have done every single episode of Freshly Grounded, bar one. And that one is our most viewed episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're saying that. I've never been on Fresh Grounded before. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, <laughs> no, no, subhanAllah, it was, uh, it was good. Because I, I told you I want to do my own podcast, Young Smirks. Uh, but at that point, I'd not set up my YouTube channel or, you know, done that yet. It'd been in the pipeline for a long time. So I just thought, Bismillah, you know, for the sake of Islam, Dawa, why not? Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Alhamdulillah, and <coughs> it was it was a very kind gesture of yours, and um, mm. I think we were able to get the message out to a lot of people, especially at a time back then when it was like just important to get that message out yeah. to anyone and everyone. Say, look, here we are as a community are supporting each other, and I think there was a lot of good that both Muslims and non-Muslims were doing to support the community at that time. So Definitely. that was powerful, man. Um, all right, John, I need to ask you a few questions, um, and to just get this podcast started, and one of them has to be this. Every time I meet brothers, um, it's like almost always John Fontaine comes into the into the conversation. Uh, Allahu Akbar, you've mm-hmm. networked yourself around and you've been in the game for such a long time. Um, do you do you enjoy like socializing, get to know more brothers, get to know more people, and and um, and just like connecting with with, with mm-hmm. brothers, basically just. How, how, firstly, how do you, like, you seem like a very sociable person. Yeah, firstly, I hope it's positive. No, no, very positive. Are you sure? Well, guess who I met the other day? Who? Lee from Newcastle. Oh, yeah, mashallah, yeah, yeah, yeah. mashallah, mashallah. And Lee was like saying, oh, yeah, and John was saying this and John was saying that. And I was thinking, oh, who's this John he keeps talking about? He goes, you know John Fontaine? And I was like, yeah, yeah, And he goes, yeah, yeah, so he's like helping me like set this thing up or giving me advice. Yeah, he started it, so. doing video and photography and stuff, yeah. So, yeah. so what's it like, man? Do you, do you love interacting with people and just kind of building links? Yeah, I'm quite social. Plus, I know a lot of people. I don't know how, but I do a lot of traveling. So when I travel uh, different countries, I just get to know people. So, yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as that, bro. I met you at the... I think I first met you at the Mufti Menk event, right? No, no, no. We met on a spot, um, spot Manchester. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. briefly, yeah. I yeah. remember, yeah. So it's like that. Like, I met you there. Uh, I think I met Muslim Bilal there, um, Abu Bakr. I know I've known Abu, Abu Bakr for a long time. So yeah, it's just yeah, just just know a lot of people, bro. Well, I I think it speaks volumes because you obviously mm. when you connect with people, like they they stay mm. for, they stick onto you. <laughs> go go to stay with John. Yeah. Um, w- 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 with regards to the content that you create, though, mm. uh, one beef I have with you, John, is along with Berg, you create so much content, bro. Mm. And you don't see it like you're like the amount of content that you have, mm. you could be putting content out every single day, and you probably have enough content for like the next year. Why isn't your content just constantly? Because co- I have a different mindset, bro. Like this is as fast as it can go. We're mm. literally live right now because I just yeah. I love the idea of creating content, getting it out, creating content, getting it out. But you seem like you want to perfect it and then like create it perfectly and then put it out, which again is a beautiful thing. Am I right in thinking that? Yeah, I mean, this, but at the same time, this held me back for many years as well. Because about six years ago, I went to the Dean Show, you know, in in America, with Brother Eddie, and uh, this is, no, is that not, not, not this, this is, is the Dean? Dean yeah, yeah. Dean, Dean, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. need an intro like that, bro. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Just but um, yeah, I went to the Dean Show, and the idea was I was gonna do the Dean Show UK, but of course, it's not a very, it doesn't work in the UK, the same as you know the states. Um, I did one episode actually with Abu Bakr Islam and Musa. Um, it was about Snoop Dogg. I don't, okay. know if you, don't know if you remember that episode, no. um, but the quality wasn't very good. So for many years, I was just kind of procrastinating about getting the studio, making the cameras right, etc. And it kind of put me off for many years. And then I moved out. I left UK. I was living in Kuwait. And then I just kind of, yeah, I stopped making videos on YouTube. I just kind of focusing on my Dawa in Africa. And uh, I do like good quality stuff, as you know. I mean, that's why, mashallah. I mean, <laughs> you should say it, you, you know, say it. mashallah. I mean, you 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 know, you got the same cameras as me. I advise you on that, and I I just like to see doing stuff with uh, Isan, you know. Yeah. Especially media. Um, so th- I think that's that's something that we're trying to like perfect as well because we got mm. so Kareem, who you just met out there, mm. Kareem's on board and freshly grounded now, yeah. and he um 
he's basically come in and said like Faisal we need to do everything with Ihsan mm. and uh, Ihsan being excellence basically mm. and he like drills it in on me so much because I'm I, I, I just it's not that I don't like doing things with Ihsan but I the thing I hate more than not having Ihsan is not doing things mm. and I think the motivation behind that for me often is the hadith um, that explains that Allah loves deeds that are consistent even if they are small mm. um, but at the same time you're right you have to have a level of ihsan but I think that mm. sometimes brothers can go overboard to the point where they're not even putting anything out excuse me they're not putting anything out and so I try to counteract that by trying to have a hot like Half decent content, but then like trying to get it out at the same time. That, that was the situation I was in. You know, I just I just wasn't putting any content out, and then these new cameras came out, which are great. You know, you, they can film for like three hours, one you know long shot, like three hour shot, without stopping. And I, I d didn't have an excuse. And then when I went to New Zealand that time, and I got the opportunity to do uh, that video with Sunny, I just thought like now's the time. You know, so I just I just started the podcast. Uh, that was the plan. Being someone who travels so much, I heard a mm. rumor about you, John. I heard that the, yeah, you got. <laughs> it's getting, it's getting huh? the risk. <laughs> no, I heard that you um, can speak uh, um, quite a few languages. Am I right? No, you're wrong. Oh, am I? Yeah, who told you that? I heard you can speak like the native language in like I'd some. I don't know, like. No, I'm, someone told me I'm that you. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not like fluent. I'm not going to speak. Like, what language is it? I'm not going to speak live on air. No, no, no. Just be like, but, but what language? No, is I can speak can, like, can speak? Um, like a bit of uh, Sierra Leone Creole, but it's it's, That's what I it's, heard. it's English based, you know. Um, but you won't hear it if I speak it. You won't be able to understand it. I if someone told and also me, a bit of Yoruba. Where's that? It's from? Uh, Nigeria. Yeah, but not much, bro. <laughs> it's not much. Bro, I heard this is just what a little birdie told me. Mm. I can't even remember what birdie. I heard that if you go to like Sierra Leone yeah. and maybe I even heard about uh, Nigeria, when you're speaking to the locals, you're speaking like a local. Nah, bro, it's not that good. It's That's not the that, rumor. It's not, it's not that good. Who told you that? I can't, I can't quite remember. I, I'm perhaps, I want to say Lee because I feel like I heard it recently, but I don't know. I don't even know how well nah, you know. Nah, nah. The thing is, I can hear it better. I can, I can totally understand. But I don't use it as much. I only use it with like friends. So because they understand English. So there's no reason for me to reply in the local language because they understand English. Because it's it's English based, it's like broken English basically. So nah. I don't know who told you that. <laughs> I think you're being I think you're being very, very humble, but I'll leave it at that. Yeah, um, how long have you been in the da in the scene, bro? Because you've been you've been you're yeah. one of the OGs. Alone Berik. Not not saying you I don't know, you still look young, but I'm saying you are one of the OGs. Though. How old do you think I am, bro? I'm going to... Um, 32. You, 34. Whoa. 34. Really? 34, yeah. I know I look See, like I 50, you know? No, you don't look 50. But yeah, I came with... Um, I started Dawa like about eight years ago. No, no, about 10 years ago. We were just doing Dawa tables in Manchester. You know, um, every week we'd have Dawa tables. We'd have new Muslim uh, classes, new Muslim support. Uh, cla weekly classes for like non-Muslims and then yeah that's how it started really that's before YouTube and Facebook and everything when I started to go to Africa with Adnan Rashid and Musa Adnan Ali Dawa uh, Imran uh, you know Dawa man and people like that when I started to see these people these these are the people kind of got me onto social media really really yeah they, they, they said look you have to get a Facebook page I and thought I you was there before that, that. No, I didn't even have a Facebook page before that. I had a Facebook page, but it was for my jazz singing. I used to, no. I used to be a jazz singer, yeah. Shut the front door. You used to do jazz singing? Yeah, I used to be a jazz singer, yeah. No. Yeah, before Islam. So, I used to DJ. I used to... I used to that doesn't seem to add up, jazz singing and DJ. Yeah, no. it's not at the same time. But okay. Yeah, so I would, I would be a jazz singing. I used to sing in Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club, you know, in Soho. That's kind uh, of... That's 606 Club. Um, if that's Ryan past me, man. Pardon? I said, Alhamdulillah. You don't know that stuff, yeah. yeah. People who know, they know. You <laughs> okay. Know? But then I uh, I used to DJ. Um, I did a track with, do you remember Sway, the old rapper Sway? I think so. Probably before your time, right? I th no, no, no. The Union Jack. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Album called Union yeah Jack. it's from Ghana, yeah. So we did a track together. Um, so I was quite into music. 
So I used to have like, uh, you know, YouTube and things like that. But then I kind of come off that. So I reestablished my social media and YouTube, like once I was with, you know, the brothers. That's why my name's John Fontaine, because that was my singing name. It's not no. actually my real name. No. Mm -hmm. But I can't tell you like my real name. You shouldn't have even yeah. said that, you know that. Because that would have just been a lovely like thing to always think. I did think your name was a bit poetic, to be fair, man. John Fontaine. I've spoiled it for you. Mm, you have really. It's like. Do you know, do you know where out. John Fontaine comes from? No. Oh, I'm, I shouldn't have mentioned this. <laughs> Where's it come from? Do you, do you know? Do you, you've seen The Godfather, right? No, I haven't. You've not seen The Godfather? No, I haven't. I haven't seen it. Come on, stop being pious, bro. No, I haven't the seen Godfather. it, bro. All, all that, the only reference I know is like. Um, bro. So you come to my house. You you buy my wife flowers. That's what I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't even buy my wife flowers. Is that yeah, that's, the, that's a quote from Godfather. I think. I, there's a scene. That's joking. This cat. That's all. Like, that's only, I've never seen it. it. There's a scene in Godfather One when the old, you know, Don, he grabs Johnny Fontaine. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so Johnny fine. Fontaine's right, the fine. jazz singer. No. So I used to sing, you know, in the jazz clubs for the undesirables, and you know. So people used to call me Johnny Fontaine. So that's why it came Alhamdulillah, from. look. I've just like, I should never have mentioned that live. No, but now, and bro, it's live. Got, oh man. This is, why I don't, this is why I don't go live, bro. Bro. Look, I told we'll you. We'll forget about bro, it. But bro, look, look bro, I told you, bro. I, know, I don't I know, go I know, live. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll make it full circle. We'll say, Alhamdulillah, Allah guided you to Islam. And now look, we're, chat, we're sat here chatting mm. away on a podcast, mm. having a conversation. So you're still able to use your mic skills. Mm. And it's time, inshallah, it's for, for khair, you know, so. It doesn't matter, bro. I'm thinking of changing my name again, actually. Really? I mean, I know. Well, can you just change your name? name? Yeah. Why not? What do you think I should call myself then? Yeah. The little face. That's not fair. What do you mean? I think he's got a ring. People to People know me as like big face. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. the little face. You know, I um, I have this thing. That I have this mm. like saying where I I always say that I'm like five foot seven with shoes on, and I I measured myself. Uh, no, is that what you, they were? Yeah, I measured my height and I'm actually five foot ten with shoes on. Mm. So, and I was really upset about that because, so the boys, Kareem and Only, who are mm. in, uh, out there, they, they measured me and they were like, oh, you're five ten with shoes on. And the reason it upset me is because I was like, that ruins my brand. Because mm. I think, yeah. like, on our live of it, we literally had five foot seven with shoes on, like, printed on the <laughs> thing, right? As a joke. <laughs> no, I, I, I was six foot two last time I was arrested. Arrested? Yeah. Okay, now, six foot two, yeah. now the <laughs> problem is. <laughs> The problem is now, now we're really getting into a problem with going live. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Um, all right, John. Yeah. So, you're a guy who loves to travel. Mm. Why do you love to travel so much? Um, I don't actually. Really? I don't actually like tra traveling. I, I know. I don't actually like traveling. I used to like traveling. Before I was a Muslim, I would travel. Um, I was traveling to Africa, West Africa on business. That's how I became a Muslim, you know. Okay. Uh, doing work in uh, Sierra Leone. But then, yeah, I just, uh, I'm kind of sick of it, to be honest. It's like the global culture. It's the same everywhere you go. The same brands, the same culture, you know, coffee shops, malls, you know, football. It's the same everywhere you go. So that's why I like New Zealand so much. When I went to New Zealand a couple of years ago, you know, the Maori tribe, the Maori people, it was something new for me. I'd never seen anything like that. You know, I traveled in Africa, traveled in Brazil, I'd seen different tribes and things like that. But the Maori people, subhanAllah, very, very interesting uh, culture, uh, interesting history from them. So I was quite interested in uh, New Zealand. Um, but yeah, the more you travel, especially like the Middle East, uh, Europe, America, it's all the same. So literally, I just travel for Dawa, bro. Like when I travel, I just, I'm giving lectures, I'm doing courses, I'm doing talks, um, meeting the brothers. But I don't, I, it's rare that I go sightseeing and things like that. You know, sometimes maybe I take a day off or something, but very rarely. Um, it's interesting you speak about like the Maori um, mm. kind of community because um, one of the interesting things you notice when you travel around a lot is that different things, um, different actions show respect and are offensive in different tribes, in different communities, in different countries. And I think like traveling and being aware of these things is really, really important, generally generally yeah. speaking. Yeah. And when you're kind of stuck in your own kind of community, your own kind of bubble, you never get to experience that. You never get to understand people on like a deeper mm. level than just like the people yeah, yeah. around you, right? But you've traveled quite a lot, right? Yeah, man. Alhamdulillah, I've not quite a lot. How many countries have you been to now? Um, I actually know I've got an app called Bean. Mm. Have you got that app, Bean? No. 
B E E N, and uh, you type in how many countries you be, you just tick the countries that you've been to, and so I've been to five percent of the world. Wow, it's not that much, is it? Five percent, fourteen percent of Europe, eight percent of Asia. I've been to zero percent of North America, zero percent of South America. You've not been to no, you've not been to Canada, no? uh, not been to Oceania. I've been to three percent of Africa. Yeah, so I mean, I've been to like about world. seventy countries. Uh, in total, are you downloading it now? Yeah, let me know. Take it, take, take off the country that you've been to, nah, bro. Do while, it, right? they don't mind. Yeah, you guys don't mind, right? Well, let, let's have a look at how much percent of the world John's been. No, talking. I mean, of course, it's just like visiting a city, it's not like you've covered the whole country. No, you've you got know? to add it in if you've even visited the city. Yeah, yeah, you take that off, man. Yeah, Listen, I'll, I, bro, I have to do this later, yeah. bro. No, there's, later, bro. There's no way I'm gonna 70 countries. I'm not gonna sit here doing that, bro. I, I'll take it from here. You start taking. Go on. No, come on, bro. We're live. All right, fine. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll sort it out. I'll send it you, inshallah. But yeah, it's quite a cool app, that. Yeah, it's a cool it's app. It's nice. Yeah. So, uh, so look, uh, talking about, let's talk about the, um, there was a, co- there was a topic of conversation that we were just having in the office with the brothers. Mm. And um, you were just mentioning now about going out, coffee shops and brands and, mm. and, and this, that, the other. And the conversation that we were having I'd love to get your take on it, is this idea that through insecurity, a lot of us end up displaying a part of us that isn't true to ourselves. Or we we, we try and display ourselves as someone who we, we, who we really aren't. Mm. And when you live like that, and I think all of us have at some point in our lives lived in that way, would you agree? Yeah, definitely. A- even if it's for like the first you know 10 years or, you, or while you're at university or mm. something. And I think only when you leave that bubble... Do you get to experience, you finally get to experience like happiness because mm. you, you, you feel a weight lifted off your shoulder because mm. now you're not living to impress people. Because when you go, at, first of all, it don't, not only does it affect you because you start believing your lies, but it affects your wallet because you have to buy this and you have to buy that to like mm. show people. And when you start just enjoying life and being your own character, I think that's when like the true version of you yeah. comes out. And so we were talking about this in the office, we were saying that mm. we just, I think the biggest like thing that we all would love is for everybody to go, you know what, I'm going to put the, um, what is it like, just put the show down, put like the, the the wall down and just be me. And so I did a YouTube video about this the other day, so I don't know if you got to see yeah, it. Yeah, I've been following you lately. Yeah. Stuff. I really like it, bro. Yeah, I just yeah. like it. Because the content's changed. Yeah, I want to yeah. speak about I want to ask you about that Fine. as well. Fine, no, yeah. no, no problem. Yeah. It's a two-way chat, no worries. Yeah. Uh, but what do you think about that, man? Like, Do you, do you, do you think that you see that a lot? Because I'm, I'm assuming Islam helps you a lot with that. Islam generally does, mm. man. Like, you, you realise that, you're, you're not here to kind of necessarily just please the mm. people at the expense of damaging yourself. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I've, I'm not just saying this, but I've kind of always done my own thing. Like, you know, singing jazz when you're 18 years old is not cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're not going to be like uh, praised by your peers for that, right? Um, but it made a lot of money, you know, so <laughs> really? it was kind of like, um, but I enjoyed it. It's what I did and, and I was accepted for it. It's who I was. You know, I didn't speak in a particular way just because I was from a particular area. You know, it's like, um, I think there's a lot of, like, uh, social pressure, especially today on the youth, subhanAllah. It was bad when I was young, right? I'm still young, but, like, when I was really young. And it was probably bad when you were young. How old are you now? I'm still, I'm, I'm in my, I'm 20, in my, tra- I'm in my 26, 26, 26. I'm 26. 26, 26 yeah. one, yeah. But, like, 20-year-olds now, bro, there's a lot of pressure, bro. Mm. Like, Snapchat, uh TikTok, all these things, Too much. bro. It's a lot of pressure, like you know, to keep up with with what's going on, and um, but yeah, it's uh, but the whole the whole world is like that, bro. And they're all tuned into the same culture now. You know, I remember when I was younger, we used to listen to like hip hop and stuff like that. But bro, it used to be like on a small shelf at the back of HMV. You know, now this has become like mainstream. You know, uh, swearing different things in the in the music. It's just changed, you know. It's changed the whole, uh, the whole world, bro. Subhanallah. We uh, just like you said, like mm. uh, the idea of not wanting to, not feeling like you have to come across as cool. Mm. I think it's so important because you realize that people are so concerned with themselves that oftentimes mm. when you think that people th- are thinking certain things about you, they're not because everyone's so concerned mm. about themselves. Yeah. It's like when you go to the gym, and sometimes you feel a bit insecure in a gym, you're lifting mm. and the weights and stuff and you think, oh, everyone around me is probably watching. 
no one's watching because yeah. everyone's thinking that same thing about themselves yeah. and everyone just gets along with their yeah. life. So I think we often create problems in our heads that don't exist. Yeah. We have a guy in our office, Samir, who um, mentioned the other day, he was like, oh, guys, he came in, he was so excited. He was like, guys, I just got these new seeds, man. I'm, 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 um, I'm, I'm, I've started gardening. I'm really into gardening now. I just started growing carrots in my garden and now I'm growing this thing which is like halfway between a, a, a coconut and a cucumber. It's called like a cucumber. So he's just like, he's the thing that, but it was just so lovely to see someone genuinely so excited yeah. about something that mm. A few years ago, you'd never yeah. see him speaking about it, even yeah. if he enjoyed it. Yeah. And now, to have that environment here where people mm. <coughs> can just speak about things that they enjoy, yeah. and you respect it, yeah. you think, do you know what? Good on you. You're doing something you enjoy. Mm. Who cares if like yeah. we're not into gardening yeah. or something? Ultimately, like the goal is happiness, isn't it? Yeah. Also, I I just felt like I'd rather put my money into experiences, you know, traveling, mm. you know, uh, especially for Dalvaros. Pala, you learn a lot, you know, traveling, like you said, uh, going to different cultures, different countries. Bro, you learn so much. You know, you, you you can't. You you have to have the experience of traveling. You know, you learn you learn a lot. Subhanallah. But yeah, there's a lot of pressure with the youth, and even just with everyone these days. Subhanallah. What would you advise them? Just live for yourself. Do what pleases you. Of course, within the fold of Islam, you know, with the guidance of Islam. But just don't feel. Just uh, get on with it, bro. Sorry, that's the no, 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 <laughs> that's, true. that's the uh, wisdom, bro. You know that um, yeah. I was with uh, one of our teachers recently, mm. and he said that um, he said that he was reading the biography of a sheikh who, uh, in his biography, he mentions that he wrote a letter to Imam Ahmed, mm. and he said something like advi- he like advised Imam Ahmed something along the lines of um, you. Um, you know, you're so concerned with like teaching others and writing books and stuff like that. Mm. Um, like I advise you to focus on your own worship. And he mentioned that Imam Ahmed replied to him by saying, there's basically that there's deeds that Allah makes easy for different people. Mm. And we should capta- essentially that we should capitalize off of the deeds that Allah's made easy for us. Yeah. And that Allah's made it easy for me to teach. And so I'm capitalizing off those deeds. And um, I think that also goes to show that as Muslims, it's kind of like a proof, isn't it? That, have different characteristics mm. and we should the only thing that you do by being yourself is you give yourself a superpower all of a sudden you, by being yourself you give yourself like you find out what you're good at you find out mm. what you enjoy and you can utilize that to please Allah you can use mm. that, that skill whatever that skill is but when you're just trying to be the same as everyone else the scary thing is mm. is that you never get to unlock your superpower uh, but you have one mm. do you know what I mean and obviously yeah. superpower is you know, a, uh, a colloquial term for it, but the mm. point is, is that we have s- things that we're good at, right? Yeah. And and that's why we even look at the Sahaba, the ten promised Jannah, and they all had different characteristics, mm. but yet they promised Jannah. Yeah. It, that proves that you have different characteristics. Yeah. Why would you not want to utilize a, a characteristic that you have that the people around you don't? Yeah. And you can really earn good reward off of it. Yeah. Subhanallah. You know, uh, you you also see this when when people like start practicing Islam. You know, you. you Recently, there's been obviously, I don't really want to get into it, but there's a lot of controversy going up around in the Dawah scene right now. And you've seen that there's just like little clicks of people, you know, and, and it becomes very clicky and almost they fall into it. You know, you get these groups of, of youngsters who are like falling into this, acting how they think they should act, saying what they think they should. Does that make sense? And like people just follow, you know, subhanAllah. So... It's a, it's a scary time. What makes you? Yeah. What, what makes you? What motivates you to just constantly stay in the da'wah? You know what? It's partly for myself. You know, when when you're active working for Allah, uh, active in da'wah, it's good for your own iman, right? You know, I'm sure that if I if I worked a nine to five, bro, I'll be struggling with my iman, bro. It's not easy, like especially if you live in the West. Um, you know, just just literally just clocking in. You know, drummer becomes like the main day, right? It, and and for the past five years, I've not lived in the UK. You know, I've lived in Kuwait for three years. Um, I've lived in Uganda for two years. Uganda is like a Christian country, but there's still like 18 million Muslims there. You know, the Adhan is there. Um, and it would be, I would find it very difficult to come back to UK, you know. But the same thing with, with my actual, uh, I'm not going to say a job because I don't have a wage. I don't get, I'm not like, I don't work for some dawah organization, you know, I'm not paid a wage, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, I managed to get by doing this and that. And, but as a career, 
even you know a career which I don't get paid for you know it's like it helps me as well and I do feel that I have something to give you know as a as a white convert to Islam somebody who's well traveled somebody who knows Africa like if we went with a group of brothers to Africa like nine of you all of you are going to get sick you know you're going to be out of it for like two weeks if you come to Sierra Leone it's guaranteed yeah but like I'm used to it you know my system is used to it I'm used to traveling uh you know having lack of sleep traveling things like that uh, being in certain situations so I have I have certain qualities that I've you know found or gained you know over the years and I can put that to use you know I, I can do dawah in Africa go into certain tribes certain places certain cultures and uh, yeah I feel like I've got something to give you know especially because I'm from a Christian background as well you know it's something I feel is a bit unique you know I'm not a sheikh I wouldn't even call myself a student of knowledge to that but I still have you know a certain level of knowledge that I can pass something on I think that understanding that you have something to give is really powerful and um, people are scared to say it because oh, mm. they're worried about coming across as arrogant or something. Mm. But I think having confidence in saying this is my ability, this is the yeah. ability that I feel like I have, is very important. And yeah. um, because then, like, again, like I said, then you can start utilizing that mm. specific ability. The Christians they call it finding your calling, right? Right. You know, finding your, you know, what what you've been created for. That's how they determine these missionaries. You know, and I think I think there's some truth to that. You know, we've been created. For a purpose, Allah knows what qualities He's given all of us, and I think everyone has something to give. You know, you don't have to be a sheikh, you don't have to be even a, a, a serious student of knowledge to be able to support the Muslims. You know, you might be good with social care, with children, with teenagers, or whatever it may be. You know, you got your podcast. You know, now I've seen you. You're doing a lot of like productive Muslim type videos. I would call it. How would you? What would you? How would you describe your like latest transition? I would say my latest phase. Yeah, phase. Yeah, um, yeah. It's uh, like about productivity. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and it's not things. necessarily like over religious. It's not you know, but it is a part of Islam. You know, you're teaching people how to be productive. I've I got a lot of benefit from it. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, that I like it. I, no, well. I, look, I don't even like YouTubers. I'll tell you. <laughs> but well, I you really, say you don't even like YouTubers. <laughs> no, well, no, but I've, I've messaged you a couple of times, right? Telling yeah. you, like, I really appreciate it. I really that. like it. I didn't even know you had a private channel. Thanks. You know, <laughs> like, freshly grounded. But then these videos started coming through, and, and I, I thought, yeah, this is beneficial, you know? And at the same time, you're doing what you want to do. You know, that might not be as popular as what you used to do. But it doesn't matter, does it? Mm -hmm. And that's why many people say, well, you don't even get any views. I don't get many views, bro. Like, on my channel, I don't care. I really don't care, bro. People say, why are you releasing it at this time or that day? I don't care. You know, I I'm, I try to keep up with one podcast a week. Uh, a week. Um, but even all my a lot of my dour activities, I don't film it. You know, I don't, I don't care about it, bro. Like, you know, videos for me, like YouTube, Videos last like a week. You know, you'll be able to check your analytics. You know, after a week, people don't watch the videos. Mm. Um, but I've been working on like books, you know, actually writing books, you know, uh, writing one about atheism, one about Christianity. And I think that's going to be more beneficial for me personally on my, on my, you know, shoulders, on my good deeds in the long run. You know, something you can actually leave behind your legacy, you know, that you're going to leave behind after you've gone. You know, so, yeah. What do, you, what do you think about when you think about about that, about when you go and about death, about the next life? What's the first thing that comes to mind? What? Because I'm sure you think about it regularly. What's yeah. the thing in your head? <clears throat> For me, uh, there's one particular... Uh, I'm working on a book, right? And it's, it's, it's took quite a bit of research. And it's, it's, it's like... Um, it's kind of a, a narrative which is so simple... But I believe that not many people have kind of acknowledged it or or recognized it. Um, so I've been doing a, a bit of research. I spoke to Abdurrahman Hassan about this. I spoke to Dr. Bilal Phillips. And I, and even like when I, when I spoke to Dr. Bilal Phillips, like he wasn't agreeing with my with the narrative that I was I was speaking about. But then he kind of accepted it. Right. You don't need to speak about what the point is, but. I just want to get that out before I die. 
like I want to do a justice to this particular topic, which is about Isa alayhi salam, about the previous revelations, uh, the Torahs of Boin Injil, you know, and what they have today in terms of the Bible and, and stuff like that, which is basically that they don't have the Torahs of Boin Injil today. You know, the Bible is, uh, you know, it's just like a collection of biographies, etc. So with this particular topic, there's a lot of research into it. So I just want to get that out before I die. Like I, I literally, I'm scared of like dying and, and not actually uh, doing something about the knowledge that I believe that I've I've kind of found or, you know, I'm not going to claim that I've found this point. Many scholars have spoke about it in the past, but there's some nuances to the argument, which I believe is like quite interesting, you know, so, and I, and, and I make dua because I want this to kind of, I know this sounds a bit big, right? But I would like the book and my children to basically support Isa alayhi salam when he returns. You know, that wow. that's 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 that, like I'm just thinking about the future, you know, and, and to have a lineage, because obviously like my parents are not Muslim. So Islam in my family is starting now, you know, with me. So to have a lineage which has began with you, you accepting Islam and then your children, your grandchildren, and hopefully the, the, the continuing generations will be Muslim, you know. Because somewhere along the line, you had a revert in your family, right? Yeah, exactly. Unless you're a Sahaba, right? You come from lineage of Sahaba. Yeah? I have no idea. Well, they're still reverts. I don't know my lineage. They're still converts, you know, even a yeah, Sahaba. Sahih, so, sahih. The, you, know, the, you know, somewhere along the line, somebody accepted Islam. Somebody changed their religion. Somebody had a problem with their parents because they changed their religion somewhere along your lineage, you know, and that's me, you know. So it's like, hopefully, you know, you just hope that your children are raised with the correct Islam, you know, and, and to the extent that you, they do such a good job that hopefully they'll be able to keep supporting Islam and, you know, you know what I'm saying? Do you, do you feel um, a level of responsibility coming from Christianity as a background to um, advise Christians and kind of... Yeah, just British people in general, but, but but Christians more so. Do you feel a responsibility for that? I do, yeah, because for the for the white people, for the English white people, I remember when I when I was a non-Muslim, seeing people like Abdul Rahim Green, Yusuf Estes, uh, Lawrence Brown, other white Muslims, it actually helped convince me that I could become a Muslim. I actually, I know it sounds ridiculous, right? But I didn't know that white people could be Muslim. I thought it was like some Pakistani religion. You know, that's that's it. That's all I knew, right? So seeing other people who had converted, it had a big impact on me. And I know other white Muslims who it also had an impact on them seeing me. You know, I get messages, you know, people saying, you know, like seeing you as a white Muslim, you know, it, in, and not only just becoming a Muslim, but actually doing dawah. It's very encouraging. And it's similar to you, you know, your audience, you know, people from a similar background to yourself, you know, it they support you, right? You know, it's like they're happy to see you succeed. You know, but and at the same time, for like the the African Christians, I feel that for them, it's 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 quite unique because what they know of white people is that they're Christians. You know, they're colonizers, they're Christians, and to see somebody actually change to Islam, it has a it has a it's a big image, bro. Especially in Africa, you know, you know, it has a big impact to see and what they would say, like a real white man. Because in Africa, you're a white man, bro. Mm. In Sierra Leone, they would call you a white man. You know, any like Lebanese, uh, Pakistanis, they call them white men. But to see a real white man, you know, it's like, oh, he became a Muslim. They, they'd never seen it before. And you tell them that thousands of white people are becoming Muslim. It's like a social proof, you know, that because they, sadly, they have an inferiority complex, a lot of them. Same in Pakistan. You know, when I, when I went to Pakistan, I went with Hamza Zortzis and uh, Adnan Rashid and Yusuf Chambers. We were doing a tour of the universities. Same thing there, like when, you know, you, you see these rich elite, you know, the youngsters from Pakistan, very rich, uh, uh, you know, in the universities. And when they see white people become Muslim, because of their own inferiority complex, you know, it's actually, it actually helps them come to Islam. You know, you kind of almost use it against them. Islam's true because I'm telling you it's true. <laughs> I know it sounds really colonialistic, but you know, you know what I'm saying there, right? I know. I, I think I do know what you're talking about, and I, I think sometimes 
um, I remember, so when I was in Cardiff and I started like uh, getting more, kind of falling in love with my faith, there's a brother who's been on this podcast called Joshua Dickens. And I would see Josh in the, in the masjid and he'd have his sports bag with him and he would have just left the gym. And I used to see him in the gym sometimes, Cardiff's very small. And uh, he's like this like huge like guy who's like um looks very cool, dressed cool and that type of guy you think, wow, like but this guy is he's like do you know what? You know when you look at someone who is successful mm. in a certain field. So let's say for example someone's su- successful in business, mm. we look at someone like Jeff Bezos and we go, Oh like that guy has got some traits that I would like to have mm. because he's successful in business, discipline, etc. And so you see someone who is like always five days a week, six days a week going to the gym. You go, that's traits I want to have. I want to be a person who goes to the gym regularly. I want to have discipline. And so someone who has traits that you would like to have and then you're seeing them five times a day or whenever you see, whenever you go to the masjid, they're in the masjid mm. and they're, they're, they're praying salah and they're, their sujood looks so peaceful. You just think, subhanAllah. And so I, I remember going up to Josh and just chatting to him and, um, it's just amazing to see someone who just loves Allah mm. and it does make you think, well, I've actually been born into this religion and I'm, I feel like I don't appreciate it as much as Josh does, who's only been Muslim for two years yeah. and he loves it. It makes you think back, think, you know what, let me just look into it for a second and, and realize the gem that like Allah has blessed me with. Mm. Yes, subhanAllah, it's, it is a powerful. I, mean, I remember literally, I remember the video, I can see it, the video where I first seen Abdul Rahim Green you know, you know, with a big white thole with big long ginger hair, you know, at the time. And he just, I think it was on Peace TV. And I was like, wow, like I was shocked, like an Englishman, you know, and he's like, he's like a posh Englishman, right? And it's like, subhanAllah. And also Lawrence Brown, it was like, wow. You know, you it's, much it's of just um, different. Yusuf Estes? Yeah, I've not seen him since last Hajj. Um, I've seen him briefly. No, but I mean, like, did you used to see any of his content? Um, A bit. A bit, yeah. Have you seen him teaching? Yeah. Have you seen him teaching Arabic on YouTube? No. Oh, it's that. the funniest. Is it? John, he's like, it is so good. Like, yeah. if anybody is struggling to read Arabic or hasn't started the journey of like learning to read Arabic mm. and wants to understand or read the letters, like, because obviously when you're learning to read Arabic, the first thing you got obviously start with is the, is the letters of the Arabic language. Mm. And use the letters on YouTube. It's like, he'll be like, and and this is a noon. Because the dot is in the middle, which is at the noon. And he's like, like every <laughs> single letter, he's like, like characterizing yeah. it, personifying it. And it makes you remember yeah. them, bro. He's like, yeah. and this, and he's like, now he's like, <laughs> when he speaks about the year, yeah, he has not, he had no way of like personifying or like characterizing the year. And so he was like, so um, he drew, he drew the year, which is obviously the lines and then like the yeah. two dots underneath. And he's like, I can't think of a way to characterize a year. So it's like, Someone who uh, drops two things out of the uh, out of their boat and they go yeah <laughs> like when you make a noise yeah, yeah. it's the funniest thing bro so I really recommend it man his 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 way of teaching yeah. is so like um, energetic yeah. bro that you just yeah. think it, it seems a bit it seems quite accepting mm. um, and sometimes unfortunately maybe we can come across a bit boring. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So when you see someone explain yeah. Arabic language, like, you're like, mm, I get it. You man. know, I spent a lot of time with UC Festus. Okay. Uh, I did a like a tour in the States about seven years ago. Um, I did a couple of tours in the UK with him as the cameraman, right? Okay. And and he, he he's the one who would like get me involved. And, and then he I actually did a tour with him in Qatar as well. And he kind of like was pushing me to speak and stuff. And um, I know him very, very well. You know, he's... he's he literally te- treats me like a grandson, bro. Aww. Like he messages me, and um, I learned a lot from him, you know. But it's like you go through different stages of your life, and every everything has a place. Everything kind of you learn something from everyone. Um, but I've got a lot of good memories from UC Festus. Okay, yeah. so being 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 in in uh, traveling <coughs> over the past few years and meeting different people, can you pinpoint like a specific? saying or a quote that's just or like a or like a story that you've been told that's just like really made a difference in your life and made you think in a, in a, in a different way with regards to the dean or, or anything like that can you pinpoint a conversation a quote um I'm putting you on the spot a bit i don't know who said it but 
you know, um, something that actually stuck with me was in terms of your good deeds, I know you've probably heard this, not like anything new, don't worry, no, but, but it had an effect, it had an effect well. on me, bro. Um, which is, you know, anything you do public, just treat it as if it's not accepted. Bro. That was big for me. Yeah. I was like, yeah. You know, that you have to leave something for Allah. You know, you have to do private deeds. Exactly. And that kind of slowed me down on YouTube a bit, you know, because there was this culture of just filming everything, like 24 hour, 24 hour vlogging, bro. It's ridiculous, man. <laughs> when you think about it, you know, like... Um, Be careful, I was a vlogger. Yeah. You, what? I said, be careful, I was a vlogger. Yeah. No, but, you, you know, you, you go through it, right? You're right, you're right. I've, you're done, right. I've done vlogs before, but... You know, when it comes to your good deeds, it's not a joke, bro. Like, same, how same, you know, same. you you might think you're safe with your, you know, showing off or whatever, but realistically, you only know if you're not showing off, if you just keep it to yourself. You know, so I think that, that had a big effect on me. Yeah. Um, but just a lot of people generally, like, what's interesting is, like, all the people I used to watch on YouTube, like Dr. Bilal and people like that, uh, Said Raghi, Yusuf Estes, like I became, I, I came to know them on a personal level. Mm. You know, like they, they're friends of mine. They're mm. not just uh, like people I just message at once a year. Like I literally, I'm in contact with people. You know, as friends like Dr. Bilal, I'm, I'm, I'm literally every. Yeah, you have a very good relationship. Yeah, with like it, every yeah. week we, we're in contact. You know, um, uh, Said Raghi, we do Africa Dawa and stuff like that. So, and other people. You know, some, sometimes I just think, subhanAllah, how did this happen? You know, there's a little story behind it as well, like why I got into dawah. Like before I was a Muslim, just as like I was transitioning from being, you know, into Islam, I had like a court case going on. Uh, <laughs> you're looking at me like, well, <laughs> is this okay in your podcast? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. I'm sure, going to yeah. cut this into a clip and... But <laughs> I'm going to make it John Fontaine's court case. No, no. So I had a court case going on. We don't need to go into details, but you know, I was being accused of something, um, and Subhanallah, like I was looking at possibly getting a lot of time in prison, and uh, I remember I, I came into Islam because it was like a two-year court case, bro. And during this two-year period, I, I came into Islam, but in that period. I remember making du'a and I said to Allah, if you get me out of this, if you get me out of this, I'll work for you. That's what I said. And on the first day of trial, it literally just got cancelled. Like the three hour court. And I remember coming out of court and my dad said like, you know, oh, that's amazing. I said, yeah, that was God. That's what I said to my dad. I remember. And... I knew, I just thought that I have a responsibility now because that's kind of like, you know, I made I made that pledge, right? It's like, get me out of this, I'll work for you. You know, because I, I was already doing like dawah tables and stuff, but I've just committed my life to dawah, you know, to... Wow. So that, that was a big point. So I forgot the original point I was speaking about, but, you know, just watching these people and and then actually finally working with them and knowing them on a personal level it's like i just think subhanallah how did this happen you know it's like uh yeah i, I know for other people watching it's nothing but for me it's like a big thing i remember when you when we was uh at the mufti menk thing and you were kind of that's how i was i remember seeing you like oh, you know, I can't believe, you know, I'm here. And, and I, I remember, that's the same feeling. You remember? Yeah, I remember, I remember. You know, and it's like, subhanAllah, Allah, Allah makes it happen, you know. And out of all the people in the world, all the, all, you know, there's what, how many billion people on the planet, how many Muslims, and you're the one who's there. It's you who Allah's chosen to, to, to be a part of that. You know, you just feel blessed. But you feel like the only one, right? You, you feel like, Allah loves me more than anyone, right? I'm not being funny, but that's how you feel, right? But everyone feels like that, bro. It's amazing. Bro, who 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 else can like subhanallah? Who else can love people like that? You know, like, you know, you know, like uh you have a favorite child, you have a favorite auntie, you have a favorite uncle, subhanallah. You can never fully like kids know who their favorite child is, right? 
because parents they can just they they just they just can't love them the same. But everyone has these stories, bro. Like you meet random people and they'll tell you a story, and they also think they're the most loved by Allah. It's next level, bro. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? No, I know exactly what you mean, bro. Like, but uh, yeah. like you know, you can sit here and tell me stories all day. Yeah. I can sit and it's like, you know, like literally, with the remembrance of Allah, your hearts will find rest. Yeah. And and by obeying Allah, everything becomes easy, bro. He just he just you know marks the path for you. And sometimes you, you know, sometimes I start like it, it confuses me. I think there's no way like. You know the, the concept of qadr of Allah Sometimes you're thinking You know Like you feel like you're literally following a path right Like like there's no way this is random Impossible. You know and that's how like qadr And your free will Your free choices like kind of meet It's that point where You've made them choices but it's perfect You know even the mistakes They're perfect They're there to, to test you and for you to learn from their mistakes so that you can be you can do bigger things in the future. Is there any other job in the world that you would do? Absolutely not. Like if any when people say what would you do if you like this is it. Like I'm doing what I want to do. SubhanAllah. You know? I mean there's, there's different projects I wanna do. Um Who would think that the thing that you your dream job and the thing that you love doing is a job that like you said earlier, it's not even re- like it's not you couldn't call it a career because it's not something that you get a wage from. Yeah, I don't, that's what I mean. I mean, you see a lot of the people who are giving dawah, may Allah reward them. Um, you know, we're not taking that away from them. But And, and I would like a wage, by the way. It's not like uh, a choice. It's just because I, I don't work for a dawah organization, you know, but many people involved in dawah, mashallah, they get paid, which has, as they should, right? But yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not getting paid for what I'm doing, you know, so... But you still love it. Yeah. Subhanallah. It's amazing if you man. And and that that's that's my job. You know, that's that's what I do. People say, What do you do? I'm like, yeah, that one. And they say, Well, you know, and yeah, they're like, okay, so what organization? I don't work for an organization. But then they're like, So what's your real job? I'm like, Well, this is what I do. You know, just because you don't get paid for it, it doesn't mean that that's not your real job, right? Subhanallah. Man. Um I want to share something with you. It's it's Please. kind of this is kind of a bit exclusive, right? Because you know, you know, the online platform of raising money and things like that, it's I don't like it. You know, where you you get all these adverts of dais or shakes kind of, you know, at, raising money. Mm-hmm. It's it's halal, no problem. I'm not saying I'm not I don't have a problem with it from that perspective. It's just not kind of in my culture, in English culture, it's it's kind of uh it's just, it doesn't look good, you know, to always be asking for money, you know, especially, uh, th- I believe this is why many people have left Christianity, actually, because they're just constantly asking for money, you know. Um, but like the online platform, as you know, like uh, I have different projects like Sierra Leone, Ghana, Uganda, etc. And I've, I've had big plans for Africa, different things. And um, I don't want to say too much, but I've always refused to do like heavy online fundraising, you know, where I'm basically, you know, really pushing the people to <coughs> to donate. And uh, subhanAllah, things just, things just, uh, alhamdulillah, this Ramadan, things just came through, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You know, I don't really want to go into too much detail, but it's like, if you don't feel comfortable with something, then don't do it. But Allah will still provide for something You know, it's been like literally nearly 10 years I've been trying to do certain projects You know, we have school projects in Sierra Leone And eventually, alhamdulillah You know, Allah brings the support And maybe in a future podcast You know, when I actually fulfill uh, this vision uh, Maybe we can speak a bit more about it, inshallah But the point was just, you know just don't don't compromise not just your religion but your own kind of uh, principles, basically. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's important yeah. because you you have to have your own principles yeah. as well, and you and you and you can. Mm. Um, we we were just speaking about the um, the things that 
so if something's ever like hit you right, or like something uh, something that stuck with you and i remember when i first um joined instagram which by the way i don't have instagram anymore at um, all no nah, uh, yeah at all. I, I mean i have access to the fresh yeah, yeah, yeah. one if i want to but mm. um when i first joined instagram i saw there was a, there was a um there was an account that you know they post like writings and stuff like just like little qu- little quotes or little mm. uh, poems and stuff. I uh, said so this account I don't know if it was a brother or sister, but he or she used to write poems and stuff, right? Just like little short ones. And um, they, they, over the years, there've been loads of quotes from uh, Quran, from various ahadith that have stuck with me. That have stuck with me. <clears throat> but there's this poem that when I it, I think it was just because it was like one of the first times I saw something that really hit me, and um, and so to this day it. Um, it like how it, it, it's just a nice quote that I like, mm. and oh, sorry, a nice poem that whoever wrote it may Allah reward them because I don't think the Instagram page even exists anymore. But mm. they don't know that they wrote something, and it, it, it helps, right? And so, um. if you look at my phone cover at the front of my phone, you can see that my um, the, you can see there that my it, can you read that? Yeah, even if I have to crawl. Yeah, it says even if I have so to crawl. That's what it says, right? Yeah, and that makes no sense, but it reminds me of this mm. poem that this person wrote. And um, and I'll read you the poem. <coughs> and it's an amazing poem to read when, as we all do, you commit a sin. Uh, and, and definitely, like, the best thing to read when, you're committed, when you've come here, this sin, and you want to increase your mind, is obviously Quran, increasing your knowledge. Mm-hmm. But it's a nice thing to read. Uh, you commit a sin, and you feel a bit hopeless, right? And this, I found, motivated me. And so I'll read you the poem. It says, it kind of, what it did is it kind of it 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 explained what I feel after I've committed a sin into words, which I found which I found like I thought, oh yeah man that's that's how I feel. <clears throat> so it says, I'm falling back into the pit I was once taken away from. Painful memories have crept back in as my mind becomes numb. Restless is what I'm feeling as I find it hard to breathe. Tears fall down my cheeks as if my skin has begun to seethe. It was out of my own weakness that I have been consumed with so much pain. I became lost in a delusion for my own worldly gain. (coughs) But I will make my way to him, even if I have to crawl. Who else will find me a way out? Who else can I call? Forgiveness is what I seek as I now begin to plead, for he is my protective friend when I am most in need. And that Mm. was powerful to me, man. Mm. Like so many elements of it, because... So he's split into three parts, his poem, mm. right? And the first is basically saying, I'm falling back into this pit that I was once taken away from, mm. which shows that, like, I'm going back to the, my old ways. And Allah was the one who took me away from it, right? But also what that first line does, I'm falling into a pit that I was once taken away from, mm. it shows you who really is the king, right? Allah. I, I'm saying I'm falling back into the pit. I'm the one who did it to myself. And I was once taken away from it. It was Allah who took me away from it. So it's, I'm, I'm, I'm almost like you're owning the sin. Mm. And then I'm saying it was out of my own weakness that I've, be, I've, consu- I've become consumed with so much pain. Because when you sin, Akhi, you, feel pe- you feel pain, man. And it's only because of myself. Because mm. probably because I became del- deluded with the worldly gain. And then the last part of it just really hits me. Because what happens at the beginning, you're like, you, the beginning of the poem, you feel a bit depressed and sad. You're like, I'm falling back into the pit. And then you're like, oh, it's my fault. And the last bit, it says, but I will make my way to him, even if I have to crawl. To show, you know what, the next step is, no matter how, how hard it is, because now my iman might be low. Mm. Now I might not be able to do deeds that I found easy before because yeah. it's going to be taken away. But even if I have to crawl, even if I can't make the hajjah today, if I can't make the sunnah you or fajr, force it, man. I'm going to, even if I just before sunrise, but there's no way I'm missing for, right, you got to force it, even if you have to crawl. And and then at the end, it says, it gives you hope at the end because it says, for he is my protective friend when I'm most in need. And that is what Allah is. And so I think the fact that that was written by some, as for my knowledge, that was just written by someone on Insta. But that hit me, man. And so mm. my phone cover says, even if I have to call, because it reminds me of that of that poem. Oh, that's powerful, bro. That's really nice, bro. I, I like the metaphors. I'll send it, and, yeah, I'll send it yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. You know, one one thinking about it now, there's one ayah that really kind of woke me up to the responsibility of dawah, which really kind of made me think, wow, you know, like the, the dawah's not being done and I have to do it. And that was um, where Allah mentions um, uh, that, you know, that your path, you know, that Allah orders the messenger of Allah to say 
that your your way, that my way, sorry, so he orders the messenger of Allah to say my way is uh, to invite to Allah with basira, with with insight, with truth, with insight, right? But then it says mine and everyone who follows me, right? So so the ayah, Allah is ordering the messenger to say that my path, my sabil, is to invite to Allah with basira, with truth, with insight, with wisdom, yeah? Mine and everyone who follows me, right? And uh, in the book where I got it from, uh, Ibn Qayyim, one of the scholars of Islam, he said that if you don't invite to Allah, right, then you're not on the sabil. And it was kind of like, he flipped it, right? That statement, it, what it, I'm not going to say more than the ayah because the statement was because of, of the ayah. But that tafsir of the ayah, was like wow, you know. It's like you just flip the eye on his head, right? It's like, you know, that you're, you know, to, that it's his way and everyone who follows the prophet or claims to follow the prophet. That if you want to be a follower, you have to invite to Allah. You have to call to Allah. You have to be a part of this dawah. You know, even if you're not the one who's speaking, you have to be the one. Maybe you're the businessman who's supporting it. Maybe you're the marketer who, you know, whatever it is, right? You have a, you, you all have to play a part in calling to Allah. You know, otherwise you're not on the sabil. You think you're on the path, but I thought for that, that was like, whoa. When I first heard that, I was like, that was deep. That, that is powerful. And yeah. again, we were just speaking about this exact thing about yeah. an hour or two before you came. I was mm. saying to Kareem that, I said, I don't think I've ever successfully given anyone that or, right? Um, like, and he goes, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, he goes, what do you mean? Like the A to Z? And I said, yeah, the A to Z, like, you know, you explain that you slam someone. And, and I said, maybe maybe it's just not, that's not what I'm good at, right? Like mm-hmm. giving that or directly. And he put things into context exactly how you did. And basically we, we, we end up explaining it in a way where it's like, like you said, you don't have to be the one who's like taking the shahada for with the bar, mm. but it's that you almost yeah. see like a conveyor belt, and if you could just push along the way, exactly. you just have, be be a little stroke or 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 the seed that plants it. You've been in that journey, and it was interesting because it like gave me an insight into into how to view things. Yeah, you know, people always think oh, successful because they're counting shahadas, right? They want to see the end product. Right. Okay, this guy has started praying, or this guy has become a Muslim. So, but that's not that's just like the end product. A lot. Mm. Is responsible for guiding them, not you. So, uh, the success part is you doing it with sincerity, number one, mm. and with basira, with truth, not with lies, not with lack of knowledge, not with lack of wisdom, with basira. You know, like insight. You no, know, I so like it's that. like your whole podcast is dawah, bro. You know, I, I was just saying on the way down. I was driving down from Manchester, and I was actually saying like, Chris, practicing Christians, right? Their youth, if they're practicing. I don't mean to sound disrespectful, but they're a bit weird, if you know what I mean. They're not like, they're like, do you know know what I'm saying? They're not really in touch with life, if you know what I mean. Do you you know what I mean? I don't don't know what you mean. The reason I don't know is because I I don't don't see... When when you get like 25, 30 year old Christians who are practicing Christianity, churchgoers, they're very sheltered. Okay. Um, They're like... uh, (laughs) You know, they have, it, they're like, it, it's not realistic, if you okay. know what I mean. But we have like normal Muslims, like you. You're just like a normal, normal guy, right? I appreciate that. No, do you know what I mean? I'd like, like to get your heart back. And, <laughs> you, no, do you know what I mean? Like, you, people relate to you, right? You're a normal Muslim who follows a religion. MashaAllah, you study in Arabic, you study in the deen as well. But you're just a normal guy. You're doing like productive Muslim videos, right? Not necessarily like teaching what, people would expect but that's your thing and it was just like in islam we have that we have like Mm. normal practicing people islam doesn't ask for much bro it's just praying five times a day being a good person you know doing good deeds you know it's it's not as hard as people think you don't have to be a sheikh you don't have to be you know you don't have to you don't have to know arabic you know yeah we should know arabic but you know what i'm saying it's 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 easy you know, but people make it difficult, and I always find this with with certain communities, uh, especially the uh, especially the Asian community. I would say, um, you know, the 
And by the way, we should pray our sunnah salah, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying don't. Yeah, I know I'm exactly not, what you're going to say. I'm not saying abandon the sunnah, yeah. right? But there's like this big emphasis on all the sunnah salah. Yeah, I, yeah it makes the deen difficult, It makes right? the deen difficult. Yeah. You've got kids who are like, like literally, right? I was just, I just met a friend of mine, right? Who recently come back to the deen, right? You don't know what this guy's going through, bro. Well, this guy was literally a pimp, bro. I'm not joking, right? Like, uh, in major, major, major sins, right? And it's like, you don't know what these people are going through. And you got the, the, the people saying, you've got to do all the sunnah salah. Mm-hmm. I told the guy, look, forget that. You know, do your five daily prayers. Don't miss your five daily prayers. Get them on time. If you miss one by accident, no problem. It's no problem, bro. You're not accountable. If you if you generally forgot or, you, you know, it slips your mind, it's not a problem. Just pray. Just pray as soon as you remember, you know. And, uh, and at the very least, don't go to sleep without all them salah being prayed. Because that's what he needs, right? That's his level. And I think we have to... I'm not saying simplify the deen. I'm saying present the... The obligatory stuff first, you know, all these extras they, they come later, you know. I think you're right. Um, and one thing I noticed when I started becoming passionate about the dean is that a lot of the things that I thought were right, the dean is a lot easier. Mm. Like, bro, I wouldn't like, I remember when the first time I must have prayed in my shoes. Like at my grandparents' house or something, he was like, "What?" And then when you hear stuff like, uh, "You understand?" Just, just load the, the, the list. I think is endless. You know what I mean? And I remember, I remember one time <clears throat> when I realized how easy the dean is. By right? one, one specific time that I remember. So I used to work in retail, and so I had just started um, practicing maybe like a year ago, and I I was working in retail, and so when I would pray. I had heard, so bear, so this is what the importance of like studying as well. Mm. I had heard that you can wipe over your socks, right? So I was like, oh wow, this is amazing! Look how easy the dean is—you just wipe over your socks. Like you don't have to, you don't have to make wudu properly once you once you made it. And so I used to um, make wudu and pray at work, and then I'm like, you know, on, on my on my feet for eight hours, like walking around the shop floor and stuff. And I ended up getting a um, really bad infection on my foot. Eventually, I went to a doctor. I was like, it's too bad. I'm struggling to walk on it. I went to a doctor's and my doctor said to me, um, d- do you like wear wet socks? Like, do you put socks on straight after the shower or anything like that? And that's when it hit me and I thought, oh, yeah. I'm, I, I'm like, um, I, I realized, I don't know when the best time to tell. You washing your feet with your socks on, bro. I always wash my feet with my socks on. What? Bro. Like, loads of water. Um, everything. Loads of water. Cause I, cause Lots of water, yeah. Yeah, but I'm washing the bottom and everything. And I'm like, oh, so that's what it is. So, but then what happened is I thought to myself, mm. but that doesn't make sense because now I understand where the infections come from. But uh, Allah wouldn't like want me to do something where I can so easily like get an infection. But then, so then I was back and then you realize that you only have to wipe over the top of the sock. Mm. You don't have to wipe the bottom, bro. Mm. And that's when there's literally time when no it water as well, right? right. But that, but that's when yeah. it clicked to me that mm. like the dean is easy, right? And mm. also how important it is to study mm. because for months I was getting water, bro, wiping the bottom of my sock, wiping. But like, what? How you'd wash your foot, but just put mm. the sock on? Yeah, you know what I mean. And um, and then I realized, oh, let's have a look. What's that message you got over there, John? It's bad podcast. Sorry, bro. Sorry. I'm joking. <laughs> um, so that's what I was doing, bro. And yeah. um, it made me realize the ease, but also how much like you have to study and understand. When you, the more you study, the more you understand. Mm. The more you realize how how easy the religion is to practice, especially all these things like when you're out, when you're traveling, yeah, yeah. and so on and so forth. You know, Spana, just on that point, a beautiful point, right? Because you know they 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 always um, mention you know the ease of the religion and like um, you know if the religion was about was like. Um, y- if it was about rationality over like revelation, right? Then you you would uh, some scholars have said like you would you would like wash the bottom, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, you know yeah. But Ibn Taymiyyah, mashallah, check this for wisdom, bro. He says even that's rational because if you if you put water on the bottom, 
you'd be picking up the dirt, bro. Mm. You know, when it's dry, you just, you know, it's like, so it's just like you wipe the top. Because if you did put the water on the bottom, you know, you'd be picking up dirt. Yeah. Do you, you understand what you I mean? No, I understand what you're saying. We, when we were in uh, a class, the teacher also gave another rationale for that as yeah. well. And I can't remember what it was. But it was mm. another, because they said, like, you'd think that rationally, like you said, you'd yeah. the, the, the bottom gets dirty. Yeah. But there was another rationale for yeah. why the top is, yeah. um, why it's more important. But I can't, I can't A lot of the time, they, they quote Ali about, you know, the showing that, you know, the, 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 uh, the wisdom, you know, no, the, the rationality that it's revelation over reason, basically, mm. you know, because you, you would think that you would clean the dirty part, but it's not dirty, is it? It's just dust. But if you if you put water on it, you know you'd be picking up. Anyway, it's just a little. Yeah, no, so I know. I, I, I thought, I thought so like even that, where the average person, including me, looked at it and thought, well, you know, why wouldn't you clean the bottom? Right. But even that makes sense. Mm. You know, that everything in Islam has a has a you know, makes sense. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So, John, before we round up, um, I'm going to say two things. So, first of all, um, if anybody in the comments has questions uh, that they want to put. Um, to John, I want to make any statements or anything like that. <laughs> make any statements. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> make what statement? <laughs> I just like, anyone want to make, make any statements about John? <laughs> 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 um, uh, if anyone has any questions, you can put them through and then inshallah, maybe we'll, we'll throw them up. Uh, but before we do go, John, what is next for Mr. Fontaine? Um, what's going on, man? You're obviously in the UK for now. Uh, what any yeah. cool projects? Are uh, any videos coming out soon, bro? You have so much content. You have a library of content. If you're not doing anything with it, like what? Like you said, we make do. We we <laughs> take your content, bro. We make use of it. I've not got any content. Bro, I, mean, I always whenever, every time I'm with yeah. you, I see you, you're filming. Guaranteed, right now you have all of your equipment with you. Am I right? Or yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that I came to London this weekend actually to do some podcasts. So I'm trying to get a few months in advance. Nice. So who are you getting on? Do you know? Um, we've got um, who've we got on? Hopefully Abu Bakr Islam. Oh nice. Um He's going south for that. He's very he's very south. Yeah. Um he's about he's about nine, nine, nine different nine. Yeah, in a couple of days, yeah. So you're just gonna have them nine recorded and then you're gonna go in one a week. Uh, one a week. Because I'm gonna be travelling soon because I live in Uganda. Okay. I'm in the process of leaving Uganda and moving to West Africa, like okay. Ghana, Sierra Leone, um, where I'm gonna be doing more work over that side, West Africa. So, you know, when when I'm in Africa, I can just release that, you know, week by week. But yeah, the plan now for me is uh my main focus is like Dawa in Chris, uh, in uh, in uh, in Africa. So Ghana, Sierra Leone, um I'm working on like an education project. Uh so inshallah I want to build like a, an education complex or village type thing. High end education, you know, like uh to Inshallah, revive Islam, inshallah. Wow. And, uh, and we, have, we have like about 96 schools as well uh, under our charity in Sierra Leone, about 26,000 students. And we're trying to refurbish every single school because wow. it's like it, it costs about 5,000 pound each school, you know, to refurbish. It's only like basic refurbishment. Um, but these are like more in the villages. But I realized that that's good. It's good education, but it's going to be very slow to kind of revive Islam, if you know what I mean. But hopefully with, with, with like an education complex in the center of Freetown, in, in, in the capital, then it'll be, I've got a bit of a plan, inshallah. Trying, sure. trying to do like the secular education with Islamic education, but also do like, um, I'll call it the Ahlul Suffer program. So we bring poor people from the villages into the city to study in, in the in like a madrasa, you know, a classical traditional madrasa system. So on the same complex you got both the the academic side, like the, you know, secular side. So you you know, you're gonna have like basically the future uh influential people, you know, and also we have the 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 scholars, the imams who can go back to their villages, you know, to teach uh inshallah the correct Islam. Because there's there's a lot of uh, like cultural things in different parts of Africa to do with like magic and things like that. So you're trying to teach them the correct Islam. Sounds like you so have a really powerful conversation with Abu Islam because he really likes to put a kind of focus on teaching the deen, but as we're also teaching um, like sec secular skills so that the students can go up and like, you know, get jobs and, and, and make a change in their families. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also working on a, an orphanage program. So 
um, my plan, I don't like orphanages. All right? The reason is because... What are you looking at my left <laughs> The reason so is... I don't know what's coming next. Yeah, the reason is because a lot of children... You know, you know what it's like? The reason you're such a good dad, I've seen you online, mashallah. You don't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, letting a baby cry for like two hours. Yeah, I've seen that, bro. I was like... <laughs> I've got some I, stick for that video, I, man. I, 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 I wanted to do that, but oh, it's not easy, man. Yeah, but you know, yeah. Is it's it, so much going yeah. <laughs> But anyway, the point is because, you know, the thing is, you, you know, you've been raised in a family, right? Mm -hmm. With brothers and sisters, with a mom and a dad, etc. right? So I feel like orphanages are like... They don't get them basic skills of, of mm. how a family runs because you're raised in a school, basically. It's like, being, it's like living in school. You know, so you, you don't have like a father figure, you have a teacher figure, but it's not the same as a as a mother figure or, the, or a father figure. So to sponsor an orphan for maybe like 30, 40 pound a month, just for, for argument's sake, right? I would rather give that money to a family to adopt an orphan. So for instance, in Sierra Leone, you've got like- Wow, that's powerful. You know, that's yeah. very powerful. So in Sierra Leone, you've got like, maybe the wage there is like 40 pound a month for, for a policeman, bro. That's like a good job. That's how poor they are, right? So if you give that to a family, like even twenty pound a month, they will jump at the opportunity to raise an orphan. Now, my argument is that in Africa, generally families do adopt the orphans um, because they're kind of like a source of income. Because after school, they work in the market, mm. right? And also there's a tribal system. So tribes don't let their orphans just, you know. So my idea is that they, they do adopt them anyway. Like if they, in Africa, if there wasn't any orphanages, uh, there, there are some places where there would be problems with children being homeless and stuff. But most of the time, they find a household anyway. You know, that's what I found from my experience in Africa. Not all the time. There, are, there, aren't, there, are, there is a need for like orphanages. But I want the orphanages to be like a halfway house where... We're fine trying to house them, you know. So at the same time, you're helping a poor family, a Muslim family, get half an income or even a full income, you know, maybe even thirty pound a month. You can you can pay someone. That's like a nearly a wage, bro, right? For the for the household. So you're helping the household, and the children are growing up in a normal family. At the same time, a part of that sponsorship can go towards funding the school. So maybe ten pound funds the teachers for the school. So you know, if if the the children in that household work after school, then the orphan can do that. Do you understand what I mean? It's kind of like um, a cult, you go with the cultural norms. So that's kind of my take on it. That's so powerful, yeah. man. Just but, for them, to, for the child to grow up in a family and yeah. But and at the same time, I only recommend this for the boys. I okay. think with the girls, I think it's better having the orphanage personally because we're just a bit more protective of the girls. Mm. You, do you know yeah, what I mean? Understandable, it's course. different, yeah, you know. Um, uh, you know, so I, I would prefer I would prefer to see orphanages be more for girls, you know. And if you've got good sisters who are running the orphanage, they can teach them how to be good mothers. Mm. And you can, you know, you can get them, uh, I I you know, working in a nursery and things like that to learn the skills of a mother, which they they wouldn't have had. Uh, but with the boys, I think you can house the boys. You can house the boys, inshallah. I, I, this is a program that I'm trying to work on in in Africa. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, that sounds amazing. And it sounds yeah. like you read really, like done some thinking about the psychology yeah. behind yeah. like how a child is raised and stuff. And I think that's, that's the awesome, thing. Man. The thing is, I mean, because you, you see certain situations like in Rwanda where, with the genocide. Uh, I don't know if you have you had Uthman Latif on your podcast. Uh, I I haven't had him on here, but I've done I've interviewed him on the Iman channel. Bro, you gotta get him on. Bro. Yeah, bro. He, he's in slow. Yeah, I didn't know that, but, I, but now you just Osman. that's probably going live now. Everyone knows. No, where it slow is. on the other side. Yeah. You know, all <laughs> so far away. <laughs> no, uh, no, uh, but but I I have had a, uh, yeah. a chance to interview him on Iman Channel about something, and he's very intellectual. But he's done some research on the Rwanda genocide, and literally, like the Christians, uh, the the two tribes were killing each other, like the Christian tribes. But after that, the Muslims came. And, and basically, because they'd lost their humanity, bro, because they'd been slaughtering each other, right? And the Muslims came and trained them how to be mothers again. And you see a similar thing through, through people who have been, who've had certain histories, um, certain communities, 
uh, that they 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 don't have the the skills of parenting because of, because of some way or another you know whatever whatever background they're from and i think it's so important to 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 basically put them in the household i think the sisters will be okay in in the in the orphanage but the brothers they need to know how to how a, how a household works because mm -hmm. this is going to be so irresponsible so, bro. So. you know because it's just like uh, you know so it's just a, an idea i've got a few different ideas uh, of projects again with with traveling and seeing different examples all over the world you kind of pick different ideas and, and you see what's right for that particular country like this wouldn't work in other countries yeah there's no you know, one way there's no, no, one, no, no one way no no yeah no, no, no. I, yeah, yeah. no i think that's amazing man especially doing yeah. doing it in a way where you can kind of look at what's yeah. happening at that specific country what's yeah. happening in that specific space I'm also just a, another one uh just before you cut me off i know uh I know productive Muslims got to go at half past five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I've, I've got. got, time, got time. I've just got to. I've got to tell you. <laughs> You're going to take me to uh, five twenty nine and fifty nine seconds. You know, Faisal's like productive Muslim uh, mode, right? He's like, yeah, I've got to leave five five thirty on the <laughs> dot, and uh, uh, you know, and Subhanallah. Anyway, um, what I was going to say, even to do with charity work, because I've 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 seen a lot of different uh, projects and a lot of charities. Uh, in my opinion, are quite hands off. They they raise money in the UK, mm -hmm. but they delegate that work a lot, so they don't really know what's going on on mm -hmm. the ground. So another, it will it will leave it there, inshallah. No, but no. I've got time. Bro. No, no, because I know you're. Wait, what, is my body <laughs> language being disrespectful? Bro, bro, this no, is, no, no. This is I love fresh the garden. No, I was just saying like <laughs> it, some. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> you are breaking through that, but I was gonna know. Do you know what? The reason my body language went is because I was actually gonna make a point because um we went when we went to Gamble we were able to see some of that, yeah. and um you're right in that they kind of some some charities yeah. Yeah. almost like set it up. And then they, mm. in a good way, let the locals run it because mm. then they have jobs and stuff, but there's no maintenance or regulation. Yeah. And there's no like checking back on That's it. That's why I like Abu Bakr's project, Spot. He's on the ground. He's originally from there. He knows what's going on. He's got, he's got solid people on the ground. And the key to your charity is having people you can trust. And he's got that, that in, in Gambia. That's why he's been so successful in what he's doing because he knows what's needed. Yeah. Um, but some charities, they're, they're literally, they don't have a clue what's going on. I'll give you an example. Like, like sometimes there's like a, a flood or a devastation or something, and an earthquake or whatever it may be. And so I've seen, like, I remember in, um, and I don't mean no disrespect here, because the, their heart is in the right place. They don't, right? probably don't mention... I'm not going to mention names. Name. No, <laughs> no, definitely not. No, because I have... Subhanallah, I, I totally don't mean any disrespect because no, no, there's no ill intentions or anything. It's just uh, ignorance on the ground, not yeah. not quite understanding the situation. So I'll give you an example. There was a flood, uh, a landslide in, in Uganda and literally charities were flooding to the place. Oh, that's probably not the best way to describe it. But anyway, charities were going to the place, bro. But literally, like twenty five kids died. Right? Like you know, it's a mudslide, and it's bad. But literally, like hundreds of thousands of pounds were pumped into this particular area, right? So charities would take food, aid, etc., clothes, um, you know, everything you need, right? The problem is, they were taking aid which was purchased outside of the villages. And bringing it into the village. The problem with that is the whole market, the, the actual village market, they couldn't sell anything, because the whole, because uh. everyone had been given enough supplies for a month or two months. Do you understand what I mean? Mm. So you, you've you've killed a local market yeah. by saving a few bags of rice by buying from like a, you know, a, like, like a, a nice, wholesaler, yeah, wholesale. you know. But but you, you just kill the whole business, you know, a whole the whole market, and at the same time, you know, there's other issues like if you give someone like a, a you know, a, a enough food for a month, they they'll generally finish it like in three weeks because you don't ration food the same as you ration money, you know, the, you know, you don't kind of think like that. So there's there's issues like that on the ground where I would prefer to literally just give people cash. You know, you give people 
you know, 50 pound, 100 pound, whatever it is, 100 pound a family, and then they can spend it in their local community, you know, and that money just keeps circulating rather than being spent outside of the community and you kind of ruin the, the system. So I think there needs to be a lot more thought and research gone into charity, definitely, you know, so this is something I'm kind of working on. Um, I, I, did, I did set up an organization called Beit al-Zakat, which was basically I wanted to educate the Muslims on how to spend your money properly and also get like scholars to kind of educate the Muslims on, on like, you know, like not just halal or haram, but ethical, ethical like charity, that type of thing. How can people support, before we go, your um, projects um, or in the words of John Fontaine, projects? Um, do you have a your Patreon you just recently started? Am I right or wrong? Yeah, so I started a Patreon. That just kind What's of the link? Uh, John push Fontaine. It out, push it out. John Fontaine, I think. Pa- Patreon.com forward slash John Fontaine. Yeah, I think so. Let's so, check, let's check but, it out. Yeah, but that, that Patreon is like, that's more for the podcast and general like kind of expenses because obviously when I travel, I've got costs of like flights and petrol, things like that. So that's kind of like, you know, that type of thing. But if you want to support like specifically, Africa projects, like a specific project, whether it's a school or education project, um, then, you know, contact me direct or you can donate. I've got a link on my uh, YouTube and my uh, Facebook. Uh, it's like a launch good. So you can you can you can support on that as well for the education projects in Africa. Okay. And yeah, so but the Patreon, if if if, you know, like if people can support like five pound ten pound a month but consistently that is so mu- that's so much more helpful you know because it, it just allows things to to go on especially if you can build that up you know so that we have like so a, a monthly income I'm, I'm on your um yeah i'm on your uh patreon yeah and it looks like you haven't st- you haven't created yeah, this is ha- the, this is why I came to the productive Muslim. Yeah. Do you know bro? what, bro? Well, let's yeah. help you set this up. Today. Inshallah. Because inshallah. because if people want at, at the current moment, yeah. if people want to support you on Patreon, mm. they literally can't because you haven't created a like the tiers. You have to create like five pound a month, ten pound a month, fifty pound a month, mm. and they can like select it. And but we'll get that set up for you. But inshallah. people have still managed to How? some people. St- they still don't. Maybe I'm on the wrong one. Um, because I'm on Patreon.com for says John Fontaine. Do you think that you could have? Is that it, d- does it d- no? Because this one you joined May 2018. Oh no, that's the old one. Now. But it's a picture of you. Yeah, a lovely picture of you. I tried to set one up before. Fine. So, but then there was an issue with Patreon before. Do you remember? You couldn't do it when you was from UK or something like that. Only recently they kind of. Fine. So let's um, see if. No, that's the wrong one. Then that's the wrong one. John Fontaine Patreon. No. Um, Mr. John Fontaine. Mr. Maybe, John Fontaine. Maybe. No. Let's have a look. Yes. And there we have it. Allahumma barik. So Mr. John Fontaine, there we are. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I've still not set that thing up you're talking about, though. Really? That, yeah, like the tears. Maybe need to do that. But yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, we'll look at it. Yeah. No, no, maybe you don't need tears. Oh, no, no, you can choose what you pay. Okay, that's yeah. cool. But, but I, that's should, cool. I, should, that's I should probably set up the tears as well, right? Yeah. No. No? It's fine. Yeah. Sorry, bro. I'm just showing you. All right, guys. Um, John, John, thank yeah. you so much. Barakallahu feekum. Honestly, thank you so much for coming down just and joining the bro. podcast. Um, I really appreciate you driving down. You came all the way uh, from up north. Yeah. And I know you have a few projects here in London. So, um, uh, ahlan wa sahlan. Marhaba. You're welcome here. Uh, into our city of London. And um, we'll see you again soon, inshallah. But li- listen, inshallah. listen, first of all, yeah. love would love for you to come back on Fresh and Garden sometime. Inshallah. Uh, inshallah. But more than that, next time you get a big guest, hold a big phase again. and we'll, uh, Inshallah, you know Sonny Bill? Yeah. He's living in Manchester now. I know, but yeah. we, I've, tried, I've tried getting in touch. Yeah. It's not really making... Inshallah, let's, let's see if we can get him on Fresh and Garden. Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah. Inshallah. Min fadlik. All right, Jazakallah khair, guys. Uh, thank you so much for uh, watching live on the live stream, and um, we will see you again on another episode, inshallah, next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.